All right, so at this point, we're starting to target the sidebar. Uh, I want to move these elements to their own line. So after uh, what we've got here, aside section two, we need to target each, target each of those elements. They're links. They're links inside the, uh, the sidebar. So we will say uh, aside section A. Any links that are in a section in an aside, <coughs> we will say display block. <coughs> we had display inline when we did the opposite for the nav bar in the header. It was bullet points that were taking up their own line, and then we did display inline um, to do one line. Here's the opposite. We had all of these links on one line. We want to separate each one to their own line. Display block. So we'll say here forces inline elements, inline level to block level elements. Save it and run it, and you'll see that those Links now have uh, moved, or should have moved it down to each one having their own line. Let's see on mine. There we go, they moved to their own line. A moment ago they were in line, now they're block level elements. Well, I need to remove that underline, I need to choose a better color, I need to start to deal with hovers when I put my mouse on it. So let's refine this aside section A more. It, they're too close to each other. Padding, 0.75m all around. The space inside of each A tag now has been uh, 3 quarters of a unit. I then also want to make dividers. We did dividers up on the nav bar by putting a, a border to the right. Well, these are now top on top of each other. So we will do a border bottom. Border dash bottom. One pixel solid. Let's see what color did we use up on the top here? Nav bar. Midnight mm -hmm. blue. Let's use the same one. Let's see how that looks. So now borders at the bottom. These elements are stacked, so the first link below it will have a border. The next link below it, another border, so dividers below. We no longer want the text decoration. So again, text decoration removes underlines. We don't need those underlines, we're going to do something nicer. The text decoration none to any links in the section of a side. And the color of links We'll do orange-red again. So you saw just a moment ago, those are very basic links, blue and underlined, inline. And then with that styling, they've been separated, there's a line between them. I want to hover over them and do an effect, like I've got heroes and villains at the top. That's going to be the same idea with that hover pseudo element. So first we're saying in the aside, in the section, to the A tags, during the hover state. Exactly as before. But this will be a different hover effect because it's in a different section because we were more specific. background color. We've got a color called antique white. The color of the text will set it to midnight blue. Now when you test it and you hover over those uh, links, a color appears behind it. 
like a nice little standout design. It's That's the same idea as those tabs, but the tabs look like tabs because they were horizontal. Here, they have a different sort of style. And you hover over, little, little rollovers. Here's one more little flourish that we can do. Still inside of that hover, we'll do border left, a thick five pixels, solid, brown. Save and run that and see what that looks like. We're adding one more bit of visual flourish to those hover states. So let's see what that yes. <coughs> PX um you mean when you use it? Um PX is more like you want exact sizes and EM you want relative sizes. If um uh like my fonts, we often have them as M's, EMs, because Two M's might look good on a small screen and a big screen. But if we had put 10 pixels, 10 is 10 is 10. So 10 pixels on a small screen would be too small, and 10 pixels on a big screen might be too big. Who knows? So pixels, when I said what I said last time, where they were fixed values, and M's are elastic values. So depending what I'm trying to do, I might do the fixed or elastic. And I might not know right away, so let's see what happens. I'll, I'll put you know 2 M right now. Uh, it may look good, it may not. It might look okay. But I think it's, it's too big, so I'm going with 5 pixels. So it depends if you need a, uh, a variable size or not. So now that kind of looks like an interesting little tab in a different way that's attached to the to the hover state. We we were doing these um, rollover effects. Uh, there's one that we're forgetting over here. This is still a plain old link. Those were links, those were links, but they look nicer. That looks like a plain old link. We can uh, upgrade that. That's that part about to be determined that I left. I wanted to work a little bit more on the rest of the design, and then we'll back up. We could possibly write this following code at this point, but because of the flow of things, the order of things, it being processed, that's why I said back here, let's back up to, to uh, TBD here. Okay, let's um, add here. What, what I had omitted for a moment was the um, the links inside of the text. I was a little more concerned with alignments and columns and all of that. Now that it's looking nicer there, uh, article A color orange red. I'm keeping the consistency of the orange red I'm using a lot of the same colors over and over. That's consistency. I'm already presenting you a project that has been designed with some good consistency. Later on, we'll have a lesson where we touch on concepts of graphic design to pick good colors. You know, that's a skill itself also. What color clashes with this color? What color doesn't? What size looks good? Um, we'll touch on that. But keeping these link colors consistent is useful because then the project seems coherent. Well, if we've got the regular color 
uh, when it's a regular link, what about a hover color? So the text inside of the, the paragraph and the article there. We already defined orange, red, and the other hover color for the sidebar. I'm going to reuse that, which was the background color of um, antique white and the color text midnight blue. I'm just going to reuse that. You know, why, why not copy and paste it? I'm going to borrow what I already wrote way down here, background color and color. We don't need that border. That'll, that'll get weird. But I'm going to type this exactly again. Background color, antique white, color, midnight blue. I have that on the sidebar. I'm going to keep it consistent in my paragraph. You can type it or copy it. If it worked once, why not copy it so that we don't make a mistake? Paste that. So now links in an article will also hover over with a background of antique white and the color of midnight blue. Consistency. So that looks like this. Read more now looks uh, orange-red like the other links. That's nice. I am keeping the underline here because this is where it's most common. When it's in regular text, there's your link. This already looks like a link without the underline. It's separate, and that definitely doesn't need it. So keep the underlines there. But then when I hover over Read More, I get the effect of the antique white and the midnight blue, just like I was doing here, but without the little brown tab. These links don't work yet. We haven't created those pages. I want to write a little bit more of the text here to get this effect, but uh, let's go back to the HTML section and you write, you invent one more, one more, one more sentence in Spider-Man's story here and one more sentence in Black Cat. Make up whatever you want. I just want a little bit more text to do this next effect. So go over to your HTML and write whatever else you know about Spider-Man and whatever else you know about Black Cat. I'm going to keep it on that same paragraph, nothing fancy. Just write a little bit more because what I want to do is uh, have a little bit more text, something like that, to do this really nice effect. You probably, when you read a, an article or a novel, the very first paragraph of a new um, chapter often has the very first letter capitalized in an interesting way. I want to do that here. I want to have the first letter, if I have multiple paragraphs, here, for example, I want the letter F to be big and stand out. You've seen that in various magazines or novels. Up there, too, the B. I want that first letter of that first paragraph to be big, bold, a different color, whatever I want, drop shadow, something. We can target the first letter inside of a paragraph with CSS. This is all for style, for design, for aesthetics. I just wanted to write a little bit more to see this with, you know, one sentence. It might not have been so obvious. So I just wrote a little bit more in these in those paragraphs. I didn't make a new paragraph. I just wrote a little bit more. We'll back up to where we were just writing our CSS. Um, article A, Article A hover, Article P, paragraphs in the article. Well, we have another rather uncommon 
CSS selector here, we have the hover. It does a very specific thing. We're also going to use here colon first dash letter. There's a pseudo selector. No space here. Find the first letter of a paragraph in the article. Do the following. No space. There is a space here because this is a paragraph in an article. No space here. It has to be this way. Target the first letter of a paragraph in the article. And I will say here uh, float left. So the first letter itself will float away from the rest of the text. Padding, 5 pixels, 5 pixels, 0, 0. So give me a little bit of space above the first letter, a little bit of space to the right of the first letter, no extra space on the bottom and the left. Color of that text, midnight blue. The rest of the text is like dim gray or something. Now this first letter of, the, of that paragraph will become midnight blue. Font weight, this is a new one. Font weight bold. It basically forces bold onto text elements. And then to make it impressive, font size, 3M. Three times the normal size of the text. So the first letter of the paragraph, make it really big, make it bold, make it a different color, give us some space, and float it so it separates from the rest of the paragraph. All of that is to create what is known as a drop cap in printing. <coughs> Say here, drop cap effect. Target the first letter of a paragraph. Font weight sets various levels of bold. Bold is the most common one, but we also have uh, font weight default, I think, and font weight none. So if the text is already bold, we can nullify bold. We have bold, I think, in numerical values and weights. I think there's bold thick and bold thin, something like that. Again, I don't have every single code memorized. It looks like I do, but I can easily look them up. This creates a drop cap. You might have seen that in novels and in articles. What that does is that. Purely for fun aesthetics, looks interesting. And that's a drop cap. It drops below the rest of it. It's capitalized. I'm reusing that midnight blue, which we have in other spots. Very peculiar way to type it, to target it. <coughs> What's that? That would need to be done uh, most likely by going to the element inspector to figure out exactly <coughs> to figure out exactly how much. Right now we had put five pixels, so if we play with the element inspector, we might figure out that it needs to be seven or 1.2 m or something. Okay, a couple more things. Let's go back to the to the end where we were at in the CSS before style ends. We had targeted elements in, in the um, in the header and in the content and in the aside. Uh, what main kind of area are we still missing? footer, so at the very bottom. Footer. This is going to be very easy. There's only one footer, so we just say footer. And all I really want to do is change the size of the font down there, 0 
M. That copyright info down there, it's currently it's set to 1M or 100%. I want it a little smaller. It's important, but I don't want it to be the same size to draw your attention. I want it to be smaller. We're, we're still going to work on this uh, next time also. There's other things I want to do to it, but um, we'll do one more little thing, then we'll wrap up. Uh, these these margins here between this text and these sizes actually I'd like to target and tweak these sizes the name of the character the first appearance I think that text a little large will do that if you think there's too much space above that element I ask you to to change that we've written the code that targeted it you should be able to find where in the code we made that much space if, if you think it's too much space we'll write one more bit of code for these two elements here uh, these headings. So, first of all, if we want, if we were going to do this ourselves, we'd have to reason what, how, how should our CSS selector be written? Well, these are. This is an H2, and this is an H3. This is also an H2. This is also an H2. So we were specific. We said aside H2. What are we getting at then with this? Perhaps. Well, looking at our, what's that? It, it could be article, H group, H3. As we're looking in the actual HTML code, let's see that. Well, we've got H2, inside H group, inside article. This is a way to specify it. We may be able to simply, maybe we can simply say H group, H2. We only have H group and H2 in a couple spots. To be more specific, more accurate, perhaps, article, H group, H2. Either or. Let's, let's do that. Related to our code here, should I add it after my footer? Trick question. Trick question. It may work. It may not. It, it, our project is relatively simple enough that some of the order of our code here doesn't quite matter. As we get more complex, it will. It will matter as we get more complex with elements inside of elements. Right now, we could write the following code after the footer. It'll probably work. To be safe, we're making sort of like sections in our code of CSS related to, here's all of our, of our aside code. Here's all of our article code. Up here is section, and then up here is all of our nav code. We've sort of subconsciously, or I've been guiding you subconsciously, to write all of our code rela related to sections together. So to keep that going, we've got section, article, article H group. Well, we've started to write some code about article H group. Let's back up, in my case, line 95. Article H group H2. I want to style the H2 and the H3 a little different. So I'm not going to do the comma. I don't want to target both the H2 and the H3 the same. I want to target them differently. Um, I want to target them so I can do, for example, margin. The margin on top of H2, let's do 10 pixels on top, 0 to the right, 5 at the bottom, 0 at the left no padding. Whatever padding may have been there, I think it's too much. I'm going to tighten that space up inside of the H2 element. That text is the same as the rest of the text in that article. I want to then redefine that color, midnight blue.
If I age two after the key doesn't won't work, I need a new one. And if I do key H2 key, then you try to do for H2, that won't work. If I can you re, can you repeat that? If you do like a left for H two after the key H two and the key like a next key that will work. Did you say after the key or after the key? On the on the top it is on the left for H two after the key. I can't uh, the key or K? What do you say? The key the Cur the curly brace. Right, yeah. Uh -huh. You do H two key or bracket. So H2 here? No, after the after the bracket. After here? And then you're gonna wrap it. And I'm gonna get a new H2. And H3 and the middle word like this. No. Like a nest. Like a nest. Is that that would work or not? No, we haven't done that at all. No, and the short and short answer, no, we, we're not really nesting them. Uh, we are separating them to target the individual elements, so we wouldn't be able to borrow this to nest it to do more. No. He's mistaken with the SAS. SAS, SAS or less. Mm. Yeah. Um, short answer with the amount of code. With the kind of code we're doing so far, it's not allowed that way, but perhaps with other processors we could. So um, this should target that. And then now notice the color here, what that looks like. And then the heights and such. A moment ago, it was looking like that differently. And then I also want to bring in this text a little smaller. Maybe get it closer to this H2. So after our targeting of H2, <clears throat> article H group H3. Margin zero, color light slate gray, font size 0.75m. Make that text a little bit smaller. So that it um, doesn't fight with the size of the other H2. Let's see how that looks. There we go. So text color, text size, Looks like that. Rollovers, side column. We're still able to play with some of these sizes if we wanted. If you want, you can play with the code that's there. Rollovers on that. Tabs. This is how it looked like when we started today. It's still the same content. And here's how it looks like now a lot of CSS. This particular design that we created looks nice and it's got this purpose of two columns and with other CSS and other templates and other starting points we can create different designs. Right now we did this all completely from scratch. We will see that as the course goes on we will have starting points uh, so that we don't have to do all of this from the beginning. We have sort of templates that we'll look at. <coughs> templates that we'll look at this project is not quite done yet. Um, there's these various other links that we'll get to later, but I, I want to focus on the design first. And one big important aspect of the design is I'm looking at the browser window, the website maximized. If I were to resize the size of my browser, because I may be on a different size monitor, it stays centered up to a certain point, it then cuts off. We need to deal with this. We need to make the site responsive. We need to make it so that it responds to the size of the screen. Because this, if you saw the original example, vmcinc.net slash marvel, if you go to it on a mobile device, on a tall, thin mobile device, 
it's going to look something like this. Look at how that had to change. It's not cutting off on the edge anymore. The nav bar has become wide, dynamic. These rollovers are a little different. There's dotted lines there instead. Featured posts has changed. It's centered. This design of the picture has changed also. There's the drop cap. Then the sidebar. Well, we don't have enough space for a sidebar anymore. It's moved below. And now, double brown edges. And then this space has been tightened up also. This is more of a responsive design. And if we were like on different types of monitors, like on an iPad, different size screens, at a certain point, it's going to change in different ways also like this. If I was on an iPad, I still want I still have the space if I was on a tablet I'd still want this space up here for the links but then the sidebar I move it down so this has various breakpoints which will make sense later different size monitors will change the design depending where you're at then when you're on a mobile device it needs a different kind of design that's coming up next and again that's CSS we will be able to detect what's the size of the monitor. If I'm on a big screen, if I'm on a little screen, and a, a, adapt the design, have it respond to the particular device. That's next time. But here's the code in general so far. I'm going to put a copy of uh, my code up to this point in the network folder in just a moment. Any general questions on things we talked about today? do a little lab time until 9.30. Let me save my work into the network folder. We'll do some lab time, and then I'll see you on Tuesday.